you may have seen a problem that says electric field due to a charged rod, but it's not this one. The other one that is commonly done is a rod oriented this way, and you're trying to find the electric field on a point in the middle perpendicular to that axis. So in this case, the rod's in the x, x, uh, on the x-axis, and we're trying to find the electric field on the x-axis. So it's a great uh, practice problem to look at how we calculate electric fields. So in this case, I have the rod of length L, charge Q, and I'm, I'm on the x-axis, a distance R, O for observation location. And let's do this the formal way. Just remember that if I have a point charge, I'll, I'll do it R, Q, and I want to find the electric field at point R, O, I need to find this vector R from R, Q to R, O, which would just be R, O, the vector, minus R, Q. Once I do that, the electric field due to that one single point charge is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over the magnitude of r squared r hat. And then if you have more than one point charge, you just add them all up. So here we have a uniform uh, distribution of charges. We don't have a point charge. So we can solve this problem by making it a point charge. And I'm going to do this the very vectory way because I think it's cool. Uh, so let's just say I need to find the vector location of my observation location. So I'll call that uh, the vector RO, just like over here. Now I'm going to break this into individual point charges. So here's my point charge DQ. And I need to somehow say where that is. Let's call that a distance has an x value of x. So I can say RQ is the vector x. 0, 0, R, O is the vector R, O, 0, 0. And you see here the fallacy of the physicist to say, oh, well, I have two R, O's, and, and it's cool. And it is cool because I don't want to have to make something complicated. And, and I apologize if that's confusing, but it's just what we do. We do dumb stuff sometimes. Okay. But anyway, now I have those two. I can find R. The vector r is this minus that, so it's r o minus x, 0 minus 0, 0 minus 0. And you see that the only value of r is only going to be in the x direction. So this makes the problem easy. We don't have to worry about the y or the z direction, which, come on, we knew that anyway, because if all the charge is in the x direction, they're all going to add up electric fields that way. Okay, so now I can write an expression for the electric field due to that single charge. I'm going to call that, and I'm going to just, I'm switching to switch to x direction. All right, so I don't have to worry, worry about vectors anymore. So this is the x component. DE is the electric field at that point due to this piece. So that's going to be equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, right? Q, but in this case, the charge is DQ, and it's in the x direction, so I don't have to worry about that, over this squared. But the distance squared is just the magnitude of this squared, which is only in the x direction, so I just get R0 minus x quantity squared. Now, what I want to do is to add up all the contributions of electric field here due to all these pieces. So I want to integrate over the whole length of the rod. But I can't do that because, see, in this case, let me get my little red marker out here. You know, I have all these things. That's, that's a constant, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put all the constants. Oh, my marker's dead. Look at that. Dead marker. I'll push down hard. That's a constant. RO is a constant, right? Because that's a parameter in the problem. What, as I'm adding that up, that value does not change. So that's a constant, essentially. DQ, every piece has the same charge, but that's my integration variable DQ, but my variable is in X. So I need to fix that. I can't integrate because my, my inter I'm integrating over X, but I have DQ, so I need to get that in terms of DX. Well, we can do that, right? If I assume a uniform charge density, then the charge per length of this, which would be DQ over its length DX, is going to be the charge per length for this. Q over L. So if I multiply both sides by dx, I get dQ, Q over L, dx. So now I can put that in right here. DE 
equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught dq, which is q over l, dx over r0 minus x quant. I left off the x right there. So this is what I want to integrate. So let's integrate that on a separate sheet of paper. No point in trying to squish it all together. I'm just going to write it up here. DE equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over L DX over R0, RO minus X quantity squared. Now, I'm going to integrate. Um, and, you know, if I did an indefinite integral here, I'd get a constant. But if I do a definite integral over here, then that takes the care of that. So I can, I can just say integrate that, integrate that. This becomes just E. And this, I'm going to bring out this constant stuff, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over L, the integral from X equals negative L over 2 to X equals L over 2 dx over r0 ro minus x squared now how do we integrate this well i have a dx on the top um, and i have something on the bottom that only depends on x so i can do a u substitution u equals ro minus x then du would be the derivative of ro that's just a constant so that's gone the derivative of negative x is negative dx so dx is negative du and I can put this for you so now I get the following e 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over l the I'm gonna leave off I'm integrating over limits but I'm not gonna put them in right because I don't care at this point I just want to integrate and then I'm gonna switch back so I'm gonna put negative du over u squared see now that's an easy integral right it's just a power rule so if I integrate that, I'm going to get negative 1 over u. So if I do that, I get 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over l 1 over u stuff. So I don't want, you could change the limits of integration to u, but instead I'm going to change this back to x and use my original limits of integration. So if I do that, I get 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over l 1 over u but u is that r0 ro minus x now I can integrate from x equals negative l over 2 to l over 2 well that's pretty easy because that's all constant right there I'm going to bring that out 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over l now I'm going to put in the l over 2 here for x so I get 1 over R O minus L over 2. And then I'm going to uh, do the minus, minus 1 over R O minus negative L over 2, which is plus L over 2. And we could leave it there. We're done, but I don't want to be done. I want to keep going on forever. So let's simplify this. So let me rewrite that right here. E 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught you can't even see that look at that that's just poor that's just poor behavior right there q over l 1 over r o minus l over 2 minus 1 over r o plus l over 2 let's get a common denominator okay and again you you could just plug in your values right here this is technically done but i just want to go further so if I multiply this by r plus l over 2 over r plus l over 2, and I multiply this by r minus l over 2 over r minus l over 2, then I get a common denominator down here. So that's going to be 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over l. And then here I'm going to get a common denominator. Uh, the top's going to be r o plus l over 2 minus this times that, which is minus RO plus L over 2. Look at that. And then I get RO minus L over 2 times RO plus L over 2. Cancel, cancel. And then I get L over 2 plus L over 2 is just L. 
And then, oh, look at that. And then I can multiply this out, so I get 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q. If I'm, this is a uh, r o squared, and then this is minus l squared over 4, and then the cross term cancels because there's a minus sign. So r o squared minus l over 2 quantity squared, the end. Now let's check. units. This should have the same units as a point charge. Remember, E equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over R squared. So as I move further away, oh, so this should be epsilon naught on the bottom, charge over meter squared. Epsilon naught, charge, meter squared. Check. Uh, R O goes to infinity. What happens is it go really, really far away? Well, if I get really far away, then uh, it should look like a point charge. So, or no, it should go to zero. So as R O gets very, very big, that's a constant. So I'm dividing by a big number. So electric field goes to zero, check. What about as L goes to zero? If I, if I take my length and let it get really, really, really tiny, then the, uh, uh, it should be a point charge. If I put in L equals zero, I get the, the point charge. So I'm done. Okay, now let's do something just to check, right? So I have another video where I did this. The electric field due to a point charge, to a rod like that. And then I did it numerically by breaking it into a finite number of pieces. And I showed that you can put the, the point anywhere. Well, what if I put the point right there, then it becomes this problem, right? So let's switch over to that code and, and do the same and check if I get this calculated there and numerically the same thing. So let's switch over to Python. I got that pulled up over here. Computer, uh, that's too small. Okay, there we go. So this is, this is the electric field due to, to a rod at any point. Uh, and I, I made a visual. So there, there's my point. I picked X as, you know, some non-easy place. But I just want to move that over here, and then um, we'll, we'll pick a value. So here I have a length of, of R of point 0.1. Let's say R temporary. That's just my scalar value is, uh, is 0 0.1 also, right? Because that will be the, the rod goes from negative L over 2 to L over 2. So it will be further away. Uh, I just need to change my observation location to RT0, RT0, right there, and that, that's it. That's all I have to do, right? So what I did was I broke it into all these pieces. You can watch that video. I don't want to cover it too much. There's my electric field, um, and now it's in the y-axis, not the, not the x-axis, but that's fine. So I get this 5,842. This is wrong because that was the other, that was on the axis. So let's change that ET. Um, I'm just going to comment that out because I want to keep that the way it was. And ET, now I'm going to type in my other equation. 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, which is K, times Q, uh, divided by RT squared mi minus L over 2 minus L over 2 quantity squared. And that should do it. Let's see if we get it. I mean, I got 6,000, right? That's close to 6,000, and it's not an infinite number of pieces. So it, as I make that smaller pieces, that is 50 pieces. Let's make that 100. Pretty close. Win. Okay, I need to put this back the way it was uh, because I don't want to mess up that other code. Let's just get rid of this. Let's go down here. Let's put this at uh, 0, x, put it on the x-axis, and then comment out that, uncomment that, run it, just to make sure it's back the way it was. Okay, good. There you go. That was fun. Hope you had fun, because I had fun, so we both had fun.